Imagine you are a fisherman in Peru, sitting on a boat in the Pacific Ocean, shivering, waiting for a catch. You wait for some more, but no fish comes your way. You unmindfully dip your hand in the ocean. But the moment your fingertips touch the water, you think to yourself, why is this warm? Curious and confused with the discovery, you explore a little more and notice that there are no fishes, no sign of any other marine life, white zombie coral reefs and seemingly warm water. What is going on? Welcome to Lab 360, it's time to explore. The Pacific Ocean is a vast expanse of deep blue, teeming with life and secrets. But beneath its surface, there exists an unexplainable phenomenon which arises now and then, reshaping and rebooting the dynamics of our planet's climate. We are talking about El Niño, and in 2023, it is more powerful than ever. But before we get to what it is going to do, let's first understand what El Niño is. El Niño is a climatic pattern that causes the unusual warming of surface waters in the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. It translates to little boy in Spanish, which basically means the warm phase of a much larger phenomenon called the El Niño Southern Oscillations, or ENSO. There's another phase of the ENSO, called La Niña which means, a little girl. It is the cooler phase that causes the unusual cooling of the region's surface waters. Episodes of El Niño and La Niña typically last 9 to 12 months, but can sometimes last for years. El Niño and La Niña events occur every 2 to 7 years, on average, but they don't occur regularly. But why should we be concerned? Well, the Pacific Ocean is the biggest water body on Earth and the weather patterns down here will have a ripple effect that ultimately will affect everything in the atmosphere worldwide. Now let's think of this whole cycle as a run and chase game. During normal conditions, the trade winds in the Pacific Ocean run to the west, along the equator, taking warm water from South America towards Asia. To replace that warm water, cold water rises from the depths of the sea and chases the trade winds to the surface. The whole process is called, upwelling. Upwelling elevates cold nutrient-rich water to the euphotic zone, the upper layer of the ocean. It provides food for a wide variety of marine life, including most major fisheries. A thick layer of warm water accumulates on the surface, obstructing the flow of cold water from beneath, which in turn, does not allow normal upwelling to occur. Without an upwelling of nutrient-rich cold water, the euphotic zone of the eastern Pacific can no longer support its normally productive coastal ecosystem. Fish populations die, or migrate. According to Dr. Kevin Trenberth from the U.S. National Center for Atmospheric Research, in a recent interview, increased absorption will cause more extreme and long-lasting marine heat waves, which are classified as an area of the ocean, where the temperatures are in the top 10%. Now that we know what El Niño is, let's see what it does. El Niño starts playing with the weather all around the world. It messes with rainfall patterns, causing massive droughts in some areas while drenching the others. Whereas the Gulf Coast and large parts of coastal South America, becomes wetter. The northern United States and Canada tends to become warmer and drier. Peru and Ecuador receive their wettest months from April to October and during more severe El Niño years, rainfall and flooding in those regions can be catastrophic. In severe 1997-98, devastating flood bombarded Peru, collapsing bridges and burying entire shanty towns under a meter-thick layer of mud. The increased rainfall in South America typically coincides with a pronounced period of drought in South Asia and Australia. Several famines have been recorded in India, and a delay in Australia's monsoon season can lead to massively destructive bushfires. Australia is a literal tinderbox, over which El Niño looms like a proverbial flamethrower. Locals are advised to prepare for the worst. Coming to our planet's ecosystems, El Niño messes with marine life, endangering coral reefs, and disrupting food webs. Coral bleaching, where vibrant reefs as colorful as the rainbow turn ghostly white, is just one consequence of the warmer waters caused by El Niño. A severe El Niño in 1998 estimated 16% of the world's coral reefs to die, kicking off a cataclysmic mass bleaching event that persists to this day. 
It's devastating for marine ecosystems and the countless species that call them home. El Nino takes a toll on our health too, that's right. Excessive rainfall and the accumulation of stagnant water, creates the perfect speed dating ground for disease-carrying mosquitoes, and the birth of waterborne diseases. Imagine how convenient it becomes to escalate the cases of dengue fever, malaria, typhoid etc. Even the droughts lead to water scarcity, inadequate sanitation, and hygiene issues. But wait! There's a plot twist too. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration reported that climate change and El Niño directly impacts each other. Crazy right? The increasing frequency and intensity of El Niño events magnify the impacts of climate change. Extreme weather events, sea level rise, and a whole host of climate-related challenges are on the horizon. El Niño in 2014-16 had left a dent of an impact in our minds, as well on our planet. It was Earth's warmest in 134 years of records, according to an analysis of surface temperature measurements by scientists at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. And guess what? Scientists have recently issued early predictions, indicating the return of El Niño in the latter part of 2023, starting from autumn and continuing into 2024. The worst part of the news is that this time the global temperature is projected to reach 21.1 degrees Celsius during the episode, surpassing the temperature recorded in 2016 by 1.5 degrees. Now you know that El Niño is a disruption of normal and not just a climate pattern. It's a wake-up call for us to cherish and safeguard our environment. ENSO is global, and in the last few decades, destructive consequences included flooding, drought, famine and death. So you believe it or not, El Niño will directly or indirectly affect every one of us in some way. We definitely need to improve our monitoring and early warning systems, develop adaptive strategies for affected sectors, and promote sustainable practices that enhance resilience to climate variability and change. And as our beloved novelist Ernest Hemingway said, the earth is a fine place, and worth fighting for. What do you guys have to say? Drop in your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360, because together, we will explore.